idea for this film came to me in 1993 when I was living in India in Lucknow with my spiritual master Papaji. One day I was sitting in my garden and I felt an inner message telling me to go and catch the great Indian masters on film before they passed away. At that time, I had no equipment or skills, and I had no idea how to make such a film. But at the same time, I was very touched by the idea, and I must have kept it for a later date. Ten years later, I took a personal retreat in South India at the holy mountain Arunachala where the great Indian sage Ramana Mahashi lived until 1950. Sri Ramana taught two principal paths to self-realization. One is the path of knowledge using self-inquiry and the other is the path of devotion, surrender to the self. After a strange synchronicity where I found an original photograph of Sri Ramana, he came into my life quietly and invisibly, gradually becoming my main inspiration and guide. While reading about him, I found that some people think his greatness comes from the fact that his mind had been destroyed, that he spoke from the self like a wireless, this notion is also believed by many of the world seekers who are searching for no mind. I was sympathetic to this idea, but I also had doubts. I asked myself whether it was possible to be alive and have a destroyed mind. So finally, years after the initial message, this question gave me the push get a camera and start the first of many journeys through India, interviewing the old and not so old masters. Each year I go to India with a group of students, so over the years we visited the masters and made the interviews. I had no idea about who I wanted to interview but just followed advice and information which came my way. With this film, I want to offer a platform for each master to put his or her blueprint out into the world. Really? Come on. <laughs> of course, each person's spiritual journey is unique and there is no actual blueprint. master the same 12 questions based on Ramana Mahesh's teachings such as who are you do you have a mind how do you perceive the world sometimes it was a bit like hunting tigers not so easy to catch them start the questions, I understand that uh, you have something to say about this title, Blueprints. Yeah, Blueprints can be made for awakening because there are no blueprints available. but that's the beauty of it. The moment you make the blueprint, see you are freezing it, you're freezing the moment. 
See, it's a mystery. The whole awakening is a mystery. The, mo the, the moment you make the blueprint, the beauty is gone. Ramana proposed the fundamental question, who am I? Who are you? The self that obtains during my happiness, during the experience of happiness, is the desired self, desirable self. That's what I want to be. The same I am which has raised this question. And when I know that I am not the lower, then I automatically know who am I. If I am not the lower, who can I be other than the source? I am not this, I am not that. I am what I am. <laughs> the almighty, all pervading self. You are prepared. He is prepared. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. The right answer is. That's the beauty. When you don't speak, you really speak. Is it the fundamental question? Many Western seekers come to India looking for enlightenment as though it is an experience. What is enlightenment? So, when I start asking people, ask yourself, ask anybody, what do you want in life? Everybody wants happiness in life. Somebody can say, no, 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 I'm not a materialist. I don't want a house, car, these things, I want God. Why? Why do you want God? Have you ever got a phone call from God telling, Hi, how are you doing? Why do you want God? He doesn't want you. Why do you want God? Most people want God, you know why? What the other person wants to get by hard work, this fellow wants to get by grace and prayer. See, always this mind wants something higher. If you go to the material world, it wants you to reach. If you go to the emotional world, it wants to be, it wants to be loved. If it is a spiritual, it wants enlightenment. Always the higher things mind seeks. There is no such thing like enlightenment. There is no such thing as awaken. We are already that. We are already eliminated. We are not ignorant to be enlightened. So it's not something to be obtained from the outside. No, 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 no. You say <laughs> <laughs> You are dead. <laughs> so there's no distance to achieve that. It's somewhere else and uh, we have to go there and get it. It's not like that. We don't seek experience. If you seek one more experience, then you have to interpret an experience. An experience is as good as you interpret it, how well you interpret it. We don't lack experience. See, one thing I'm telling you. See, I am seeing you, you are seeing me. This is one unit experience. 
In this unit experience, there is subject, there is object. This subject object is opposed to each other. This duality. And this is going to be there all the time. If you resolve it for the time being, you don't become enlightened. You can resolve subject object in sleep it happens. So it can be resolved. There is no subject object. That's all. The head is empty. <laughs> empty head is not enlightened head. It's enlightened head. Okay? It's an empty head. <clears throat> there is one which is the subject, which is also the object. That is enlightenment. Enlightenment is taken as a goal. My point is, it is not a goal. What do I expect to get out of enlightenment of self-realization for the rest of my life that I didn't have before? Why am I asking? Who is seeking enlightenment? I am. I, Ramesh, a separate entity, is looking for enlightenment. So having got enlightenment, the separate entity must ask himself, having got enlightenment, what will I have for the rest of my life that I didn't have before? Unfortunately, that is a question the seeker usually doesn't go into. Enlightenment, that's the goal. Enlightenment is, who is it trying for enlightenment? He must be disappeared. That is a life. Such a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> Only one sentence. <laughs> enlightenment means <laughs> who want enlightenment? That person must be disappeared. <laughs> qualifications for enlightenment. Qualifications? What qualifications? You need to be alive, that's all. The first requirement to be awakened, to be enlightened, is to be alive. To be alive like a child. Look at the child. To be alive like a flower to be alive like a bird. Can you do it? How can you be alive? Unless you just totally be free from that whole dead past. Unless you are available to now. This very moment. If you connect here, then you are alive. To be alive means be bubbling with life inside, with all the problems, with all the pain, there is a dance inside, there is a song inside. That is to be alive, to be spontaneous. Just as in this uh, box of sweets, the box is an outer cover and what is delicious, the important thing is inside. <laughs> so he says uh, the truth is inside. <laughs> We should throw away the skin. Either only on the cover room too.
நாமும் நம்பு நாம அது ஒன்னு கிடவன் நம்பு நம்பிக்கை தான் முக்கியம் இப்போ அந்த இடவே நாம் அந்த படமே நாமும் போது நாம் வியார் டேட் வேர்ல்ட் இஸ் இமீடியட்லி ரிமம்பர் தட் இமீடியட்லி பிங் இன் டு அவேர்னஸ் வி ஆர் தட் தட் வி ஆர் வி ஆர் நாட் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் த லார்ட் வி ஆர் நாட் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் த அல்மைட்டி நவ் ஹியூமன் பர்த் இஸ் தி கேட்வே டு லிபரேஷன் Now, having taken birth, we are also endowed with intellect. Using the intellect, we find that there is something higher than what the world can give us. We can get only happiness depending upon certain conditions. And that happiness is always followed by sorrow. Now, our intellect tells us there must be something more than this, eternal happiness. And we start trying for it. That is the occasion, that is the turning point in our life to return home. Then the efforts to go back home begins. We come in contact with a wise man. who knows the truth he tells us how to go back he asks us to meditate on our true being or any other method that will lead us to our original home in that process we purify ourselves It means our mind gets purified all those desires are dropped off all the effects of the desires are dropped off Every of our actions are dropped off and mind becomes perfectly still. When it is perfectly still, we have a glimpse of our true being. And further effort to remain in that state continuously, we get established in that state, which is our real home, our own self. we go back as naked as we started from the that is the condition to shed all that you have earned during your journey then we are qualified to enter our home truth doesn't need any qualification marshi gives this example when you go to a hair cutting saloon lot of hair and then you want to read of them he has cut do you bend down and start measuring what all that have been what all the long hairs short hairs how many of them bundle them together in one sweep you send them <laughs> you don't sit and start asking measuring counting weighing weighing nothing the whole non truth has to be rejected right now not tomorrow <laughs> what qualification do you need to be the truth what qualification do you need to know that you are a human being and maharshi said this place is the center for unlearning whatever that you have learned <coughs> gathered in your brain when you unload yourself the truth dawns no qualification is necessary brahmana said self inquiry is the most direct route to realizing the self mm. what do you say about self inquiry self inquiry mind completely will be burn 
in other methods it is too difficult in those methods there is i thought is still remain when you have tendencies impressions desires habits at that moment if you question who am i it is also one of the thought only no use of question who am i that question only to ripe persons matured persons not to all it is not thinking it is not doing it is not changing it is not concentration you are questioning who am i if any thought arises that is i with the help of i is thought so how you inquire that i no chance to catch that i who am i means we require we require very very purity inside naturally heartfully question who am i you did some sadhana yes from the, from the start when i was 14 from then i began self inquiry yes, yes yeah i i read his books i read I, it, it was my father who went to ramana ashram and he he said he told me that bhagwan says that you must realize yourself and Uh, we began to do you see meditate and one cannot get anything out of it you, you cannot quench cook well the thoughts within you they will come like waves in an ocean and then suddenly i i saw bhagwan before me i never saw him before i wanted to but i saw his presence in a flash so that was his guru guru's grace from then my sadhana began very um, progressive you see you must watch the thoughts which are entering in your mind so just think who is thinking what whom these thoughts arise and just just only it is not a question you have to go to d- deep in inside, inside you to to search for them where the source of the thoughts that's how i did ಅದೇ ಮನಸ್ಸನ್ನು ಒಳಗೆ ಅಂತರ್ಮಕ್ಕೆ ಹಾಕಿದರೆ ನಾನು ಇದಲ್ಲ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುವವನು ನಾನು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಹೂ ಮೈ ರೈಟ್ ನೌ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಯೂಶಲಿ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ರೈಟ್ ಯು ಗೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಟ್ರೂ ವರ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಹೂ ಎಮ್ ಐ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಲೀಡ್ ಯು ಟು ಸಮ್ವೇರ್ ಯಾರಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳು ಉಂಟು ಅದನ್ನು ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾವು ಉತ್ತರ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಹೋಗುವಾಗ ಅವರ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಉತ್ತರ ಸಿಗಬಹುದು ಇಷ್ಟೇ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಆಗೋದು ನಮಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಹೋಗುವಾಗ ಅವರವರ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಉತ್ತರವೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ತಾನೆ ಬರುವಂಥದ್ದು ಉಂಟು
The Ramana was asked, when will the realization of the self be gained? And he replied, when the world, which is what is seen, has been removed, there will be realization of the self, which is the seer. What is the true understanding of the world? Unless there is an ego, there is no world. Because the ego is the subject which is aware of the world of duality. So naturally, if the ego turns its attention away from the world and turns towards its very source, and that ego, that mind is called the introverted mind, and then it merges in, the, in its very source. It is just like a spell. As long as the person is under the spell, he doesn't know that he is under a spell. When the Shastra tells us to analyze, see for yourself. If the eye is not there, do you think there is any duality? In other words, I is the very focal point on which the whole of duality is hinging now. Nobody will be able to say in deep sleep there is duality of any kind. It is absolute, you know, absence of duality. In other words, it is non-duality, it is pure consciousness which can never be understood by the mind. You see, when you are sleeping, do, are you aware of the world? When you are sleeping, no. No? Then where is the world? Only when you awaken, the first thought will be that I, I have awakened and you see, I must do my work. Then the thoughts begin to arise. Otherwise there, there are no thoughts at all in this way in sleep. So you are saying that the world is caused by my thoughts? Yes, by you. By me? Yes. Yes. So, how to remove the world is to remove the thoughts? Yes, I told, I told you that the, the process of saying, I am going deep into yourself. Hmm. So, by removing the thoughts, I am also removing the world? Hmm. Yes. Without thoughts, what, what is there? You are not there and I am not here and there is no world. With the thoughts we, you see, we need thoughts to live and act. Otherwise we don't need anything. Hmm. Can you say something about attachment? <laughs> If you think that we can realize our true nature uh, by living in the world and enjoying in this world all the pressures of the world, that is compared to sitting on a crocodile and crossing the river. Because crocodile will kill you. You cannot sit on the crocodile and cross the river. <laughs> you have to swallow and digest all the worldly enjoyments. If you could not do that, the worldly enjoyments will digest us, swallow and digest us. Creation is nothing but knowledge, is it not? You know, when I talk to children, there is a thinking, you know, that knowledge is in the book, <laughs> in my backpack, the geography, the arithmetic, the, the, the history, well, you know, all these, the science, the basic sciences, the biology. It is a shift to understand that knowledge is not in the books. Knowledge is right here. 
knowledge is in the creation. All that is here is knowledge. This tree growth grows in intelligence. There is knowledge manifest here. Creation is omniscience. If creation is omniscience, then there is no entity separate from the creation called God. Omniscience is God. Creation is omniscience. Therefore, creation is God. You know. All that is here is God. All that is here is intelligence, the presence of intelligence. In this breeze is Ishwara, is the Lord. In the air we breathe is the Lord. Is right amount of oxygen. <laughs> there is right right amount of carbon dioxide that comes out. Everything is balanced. There is right amount of temperature in the body. And therefore, everything in and around is nothing but knowledge manifest. Ultimately, what it means is enlightenment, whether you say the world is there or not there, it doesn't matter. Because that the world is there is not a problem. Please see that. That the world is there is not a problem. That I am there is a problem. Right or wrong? That the body is there is not a problem. That the body is hungry is not a problem. I am hungry. That the body is dying is not body's problem. So you see, understand your nature, who you are, then let the world continue. How does it matter? Why should it disappear? Why my body should disappear? Why should thoughts should disappear? Why should anything should disappear? Let me disappear. <laughs> let me disappear means what? The sense of I, understanding, knowing what this word I means. It's a very one-pointed statement. It's only one word. That is, when you understand one word, all the words simultaneously explode. Everything is understood. That is why you don't have to throw your roles, you don't have to change your body, you don't have to change your religion, you don't have to change your belief, you don't have to change anything, you don't have to dismiss the world. Let it be exactly as it is. I play work out. It has been suggested that the mind must be destroyed for liberation to occur. Do you have a mind? How to destroy the mind? The world is, if it is real, it cannot be destroyed. If it is not real, it need not be destroyed. <laughs> Suppose I say the world is to be destroyed, you will be trying to destroy the world and you will find you cannot destroy the world and mind should go. Mind should, why should it go? The mind doesn't stay, it has no staying power. Mind is thoughts. If it is thoughts, a thought doesn't stay more than a moment. It's wonderful because the mind is great because it doesn't stay. You can see motion because the mind doesn't stay. <coughs> Suppose the mind, the thought moves slowly. Suppose you see my hand moving, you will be, you will see my hand coming like this. Like in some animations. <laughs> Rama goes to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> See the smoothness. Why? Because the mind is momentary. What is to Why should you destroy? It destroys itself. But about mind, my understanding is the mind cannot be destroyed. I mean, if Ramana Maharshi said the mind must be destroyed, 
then his understanding is the same as mine, which is the mind cannot be destroyed. The mind according to my two aspects, the working mind and the thinking mind. The working mind has to be there even for a sage to live his life, for the simplest action to be done, for anything slightly more complex, where some planning has to be done, the working mind has to be there. In the ego, the doership has been destroyed. In the mind, the thinking aspect has been destroyed. So that, in the case of a say, the working mind always functions. The working mind is always in the moment. Whereas, the thinking mind is never in the present moment. The thinking mind is always either worrying about or thinking about what has passed or projecting into the future. Therefore, the thinking mind creates problems, imaginary, illusory problems about what might happen in the future, which is what causes unhappiness. So in the case of a say, he is only concerned with what happens in the moment and is not concerned what happens in the future. Why? Because one of the total acceptances of everything is happening means whatever happens in future, no one is to blame. I, I, my understanding is that Ramana didn't actually say you have to destroy the mind. He used the word monanasa. Mano is mind. Nasha is destruction. Mano Nasha, what is to be destroyed? Not the working mind. You won't be able to live without it. Therefore, the Mano Nasha is the destruction of the thinking mind. Thinking mind aspect, that is to be destroyed. That's very good, very clear. Good? Yeah. There's a lot of misunderstanding about that. Indeed. has power like a one star in the sky shining one star and consciousness or awareness is like like a sky so when this sky is open when you we become the sky when we become the awareness then mind just blow finished no any work very far, very small happened. Now, when in mind, mind is everything. Mind is very big. And when awareness comes, totally consciousness happened. And then this mind is like a tiny, like a star. Like in one corner, one little, little corner in the sky. And the sky is full of millions, millions of stars. This is the question people are asking, you know, how to destroy the mind. And the question is asked by the mind itself. <laughs> the mind wants to destroy the mind. This is the game of mind, understand this. This is the most misunderstood statement by the people. Functionary mind is the mind created by the existence or the life itself for a temporary time to function. And for that, there is a functionary ego also, which is also a demand, a necessity of the life. You cannot live without the mind and without the ego. For responding, for functioning, for acting, you need a mind, you need an ego. But that has to dissolve the moment the function is going, finished. We create a permanent mind because we create a desire which is not connected to the demand of life, but which is something in the future. The life demand is now, in the present. We create a lot of goals and that goal keeps this mind survive permanently. Otherwise, if you are living moment to moment, the mind is created, a functionary mind is created, a functionary ego is created, 
when it is finished. And during the daytime, there are a lot of different functions life demands. Life demands simple understanding when you are hungry, life demands find out a food and eat. That's all. But we create a goal. Wow, I want to get enlightened. So that I will be totally permanently free, permanently happy, permanently blissful, permanently silent. We want something permanent. The understanding tells you, makes you realize that nothing is permanent. So this is where the mind, what you are talking about, is a hindrance. The permanent mind is a hindrance. But this permanent mind cannot be dropped through any effort. It can be dropped through the understanding. Then it becomes a temporary functionary mind. That's all. What about vastness, the tendencies of the mind? Mm -hmm. Must these be removed before self-realization can become permanent? An ego without desires can never be formed. Ego is always a bundle of desires, so to say. And if you analyze the ego properly according to the Vedantic Shastra, it's a bundle of desires. And these desires, when they become very powerful, they prompt you into action. Because it is desire towards acquiring something from the outside world. Imagine, it's like telling, let's think, <clears throat> it's like telling, to make this place beautiful, I must remove all the trees. <laughs> I must remove all the vasanas for the consciousness, for the myself to be seen. You mean to say, I, the infinity, is so incapable of handling few thoughts that every thought must be removed for me to see myself? What type of idea is that? It's like telling all the waves must stop, then only water can be seen. God bless you. <laughs> Nothing needs to be removed. This is this type of thoughts must be removed. If at all anything to be removed. <laughs> Let them be there. That there, there is not a problem. That I use it is a problem. That there is a knife is not a crime. But if misuse the knife is a crime. That there is a thought is not a crime. That you misuse the thought is a crime. The same, likewise, in our heart, when all the thoughts are focused at the center of our heart, the expansion, you know, it, mm. then there'll be a bang. Yeah. Are you suggesting this is a moment of self-realization? Yes. Like, aha. Kavita, avaka vatanegulu illa, vatanegulu illuva vannu idu. Avana chitya vatanegulu matta vatanegulu illa illa. Yari ka avatanegulu unta vabbani ke, avana illa. Then I'll get there, matna vedbata artha nartha gavudu. Saavu. Savina Achegana, Dunda Tita, what the Buddha could do, Hutti on the side of the day. I shall be Hutti Sataha. It then is about the Savu. Can you say something about those tendencies? Tendency means every thought there is an impression. Every action there is an impression in our mind. That is why you use the word, we are gathered out of dirt. Every thought, 
Every good thought, every bad thought, every action, good or bad, leaves an impression or layer of dirt in the mind. You can imagine what we had done many years ago suddenly comes to our mind now. It has been there. All those things have to be removed before we can say we have shed all that we have earned during our lifetime. Then only we can, we are absolutely pure, absolutely free or qualified for liberation. For example, when we went to Nitananda's ashram, there are many small caves where you can sit. So the feeling is that it takes many years of hard work to purify the mind. Many years of hard work, definitely. Mm. Well, it depends upon how much we had gathered, how much dirt we had gathered. In some cases it is not difficult because they are not gathered much of a dirt. When the dirt is like a mountain, it takes a longer time. The world is a playground, but what we are doing is, we are claiming the ownership, possessiveness. This is my husband, my property, is my children. So, if we have these properties, if we have these qualities, then we cannot realize the true self. And the Jew will lay Bojini at no third word. When no Purlo Mano, Guru Kanaman Mane Pulandi, Guru Lam, and the Bayar of the Pushnable Marabaji will run the Chamatika and Kakala of Poland, the Tiramati. A pretty Vadiaku, Vadiaku, and Nelver and Irina, they will go Pandaman Wunu Bunal, the Atma the River. Ali Gilly Pulu Boche and Pusan Bitani, Bunati Bitali, and Pula Bojani were in Buran the Kitubur. If you are not attached with this, any worldly attachments, any gain or any loss, any loss to the properties, loss of relationship, we are not attached with any, we are not having any mental tendency, any sorrow, any worries or any happiness, then we are that Brahm, there is no doubt in it, we are that Self. For that, we have to do this sadhana. To get rid of this all valley thoughts, we had to do the <coughs> Tendencies of the mind, they, they are coming from previous births. Suppose if you do a work, we expect result. Generally, if you do a work, we expect result then result will come. We enjoy it. We enjoy it. We enjoy it. In enjoying the result, tendency will spring. From tendency, thought will come. From thought, you do, you do action. Selfish action. From selfish, from selfish, selfish action, from body bound, from body bound action, from mother thought action, tendencies will come. If you enjoy the result of our action, whether it is good or bad, whether it is good or bad, if you enjoy the result of our action, certainly tendencies will come. The main obstacle to God realization, tendencies. Uh, the tendencies must be eradicated, must be removed. There is no compromise here. There is no compromise here. Must be removed to get to God realization. If you are always thinking about Vasana, you do not overcome Vasana. Always think of God. Always think of truth. Always think of your favorite God. Always think of Guru, of your Guru. 
then automatically then automatically food supply food supply will cut to tendency At the end of his book, Self-Inquiry, Ramana mentions Jivan Mukta as the enlightened state. Are there stages of enlightenment? First experience is, we have identified ourselves with the Atman, which is all-pervading. We are not touching the manifestation. Now we are able to see the entire manifestation is also God Himself in different names and forms. So we identify ourselves with the Atman and the universe. That's why if you ask a saint, who you, are you? He would say, I am the all pervading truth or Atman. My body is the entire universe. Because he has lost his individuality. The ego has gone. The small circle he is removed. He is without any circumference. He is one with the impersonal truth, nameless, formless Atman and one with the entire universe, which is the manifestation. And so you're saying the second stage is to establish, establish in this that. universe. And he lives a normal life. He doesn't need any more practice, because he's already established in it. Is that why it seems that most saints live a very ordinary, simple that's life? Right, that's right. They have nothing more to do. They achieve their goal. And they are one with the entire universe. They are one with everybody. Their love flows towards everybody. I don't believe in these stages. You are that. There is a stage in the self. Who can create stages in the self? I don't want to ridicule the books or what the authors. I don't know. But that's what I feel. There is no stages. That's what the truth to me is. There are no stages. Then we, uh, somebody will say there are 100 stages. You walked only 4 stages. Then Ramana has to walk the rest of the 96 stages, right? So who fixes the stages here? There are no stages. Either you are the self or you are not. Either you are in the mind or you are not in the mind, that's it. All the people who read this paragraph who has not reached to understand will misunderstand as if it is a description of the state which can be reached, which can be achieved. And then the question will start asking, how can I reach that state? How can I become Jivan Mukta? How can I become Jivan Mukta? Because any description of the state is misunderstood as if it is the result of some effort or to be reached or to be achieved. This is the unfortunate part of all expressions of the state. Ramana has expressed very clearly what the state is. We misunderstand as if it has to be reached, it has to be achieved. That is why our question is, is this the enlightenment? This is a desiring mind which is misunderstanding and creating a desire to reach to reach that state. I am saying that it is a plain description of the healthy state of your being. See? And that is why the description of the enlightenment state by all these masters has misled these disciples. How? because they misunderstand the description as if it is a goal. The description becomes a goal. When Osho describes his enlightenment as if thousand sun explosion, each disciple was waiting for that thousand sun explosion to happen. I was one of them. 
Now, all the time into my meditation, I was waiting and closing my eyes that when this thousand sun explodes, you know. It appears essential to meet a guru and to stay with that guru. Who is the guru? What is the guru's role? How to recognize a true guru? You try to purify by the grace of guru. You can't purify himself and lady himself. You have to take help from Guru. And uh, if you want have utmost demand for realization, you will get Guru. Until you have no extreme demand for realization, you will not get Guru. When you get Guru, he will open your heart hmm. and love will open, heart is universal and you will see everybody his own. Until you have to go inside and you see inside your ego and that ego will go by the grace of Guru, by the help of Guru. You can't put out that ego with own effort. Uh, effort. You have to search first Guru. Then you will get realization, peace, love. Just like a dirty water connected with Ganges. Ganges automatically purify that water. Understand? Ganges will not come to dirty water. Dirty water will snap Ganges. If you have extreme desire to realize your Guru will come, you will, Guru will meet you and he, he will give you peace. He will open your heart. Guru to me is a guide. He is a guide. The way people misunderstand this whole concept of Guru is wrongly understood. The real master do not want his disciple to follow him. The real master wants his disciple to follow his own journey. You can guide him, you can help him. You can take help and guidance from the master. So they are guides. But you cannot just sit on the feet of the guide thinking that he is going to take you to the journey, to your destination point there. This is an escape. This is not the truth. And the reality is, there is nothing that you can do. There is no way to go. The one who makes you understand that where do you want to go? You want to go to realize yourself? Sit with yourself. Why you wander around? Why you go after so many masters? Just sit with yourself and you will understand yourself. That is the realization of self. Why do you have to go to someone to realize? The one who guides you how to sit with yourself is the real master. We know how to go away from ourselves, but we do not know how to sit with ourselves. The one who really guides you how you can sit with yourself. And this is what I say. Accept yourself. It allows you to sit with yourself. We never sit with ourselves because we never accept ourselves. 
you are kicked. The moment you are alone, you start feeling lonely. Those who really found the right master, it is not that they searched for it and found it. The master themselves found the disciples. Right. So that is the way. And not only the master, the life creates a situation where you are meeting that person and getting the right guidance. What you have to do is just stay with your thirst, stay with your longing, stay with your pain. Just stay with it, accept it. And then in that, you will see that there is somebody who is available always, always available. தண்ணி <laughs> <laughs> And you should pray to the Almighty, please show your compassion. I want to go deep into the teaching and I want to absorb all the teachings. I want to experience and practice it and experience it. Make this my own experience. And if you pray to the Lord and dig on one well, then you will definitely get the water. They say, if you are ready, teacher will come. That's not correct. <laughs> if you are ready, you will spot the right teacher. You won't get carried away. If one is half-baked, then he easily gets carried away. You go by the length of beard. <laughs> While teaching takes place, there is no teacher or teaching. Only teaching is there. Teacher goes, only the topic, and you see the topic, and the topic is you. Ramla's devotees had tremendous devotion to him and he to Arunachala. Please say something about bhakti, devotion, in the pursuit of awakening. Sometimes bhakti or devotion is looked upon as an activity. Let's have some bhakti, you know. Let me sing some bhajans, light a candle or a lamp. <laughs> Or if you have a guru, go and <laughs> massage his feet, you know. <laughs> Imagine 25 disciples, you know, each one wanting to massage the feet. <laughs> guru become a pulp, you know, his feet become a pulp. <laughs> so, it begins as an act of worship, but it doesn't end there. For example, if I, if I give this rose to someone, when you give this rose, it's, a, it's an act which has a message in it, isn't it? In self-knowledge, what happens is, I don't need to create an action in order to carry my sentiment. When knowledge becomes my base, in self-knowledge, the Lord is included in my awareness. I don't need to create a ritual, an act, to carry my sentiment of devotion. I remain ever devoted. <laughs> a, a saint is the greatest devotee. One who has oneness with the Lord is the greatest devotee of the Lord. Then you say, well, if he is one with the Lord, how can he be devoted to him? To be devoted, you require a, you know, hierarchy. <laughs> a higher and a lower. 
that is the culmination of devotion. When the lower is no more lower, it has become one with the higher, that is the culmination of devotion. If you ask, what is devotion? Yeah, uh, what is devotion? <laughs> yeah, our master has taught us devotion is one of the simplest and the safest way to return home. In the beginning, we see the divine or the supreme being as separate from us. Because we are not understood that we ourselves are that. We project, think of him as a personality outside us or as a power outside us and give all our love and devotion to him. Then we come to understand that he is seated in our own heart. We are not different from him. And finally, we realize our oneness with him. So are you saying that in the beginning you must surrender to somebody, the teacher, the guru? To somebody, get guidance from the guru. Mm. Who is that guru? One who has become one with the Supreme Being. Because in the West we're a bit nervous to surrender to somebody. Surrender has a different meaning there. The surrender is defeat. If you see, use the word defeat, it is the defeat of the ego in us. The ego disappears. Accepting that I have no power, it is your power that has been working. And I have been claiming wrongly that I am responsible for it. So you're saying that when you deeply surrender to somebody, naturally the ego will fall away. That's right. Somebody means the Supreme Being. That power he controls the entire universe. To that power, we surrender. Bhakti illaar bodi sudha dhiram na matmara na parampurna abhuna. Yes, the game dia gandhi ba kila ringa. And uh, can he suggest? how we can create this foundation in the West because in the West we need a boyfriend or a girlfriend for this love yes. but he's talking of a different love mm. If you tell the other, they would take the other to my enemy. I don't know because we have to live in this world, we cannot go to any mountain or any forest for doing sadhana. We have to live in this world and do sadhana. You are having that conviction that husband is given by God, wife is given by God, children are given by God, or God has come in the form of wife, God has come in the form of children. All the properties, all the business, everything, all the relationships are given by the God. Jesus Christ said, Baptai and he will become like me. So they, uh, Jesus Christ uh, asked us to cut the eye. But we are taking it as a, we are worshipping and uh, creating a religion like that. Suppose I say, Look at this banana. You will say, what has happened to Swami? <laughs> you want the Swami to be right? 
But you can't oblige your own thinking. Because Swami is not right. Why? I have no choice. You have no choice. You don't will this to be banana or orange. It is orange. Your, your will has no place. There is no way. Will doesn't play a role in knowing. Eyes are open. Object is there in front. Light it properly. Sight takes place. If it is orange, it is orange. If it is banana, it is banana. And suppose I say, look at the bunch of oranges. <laughs> For a change, okay? For a change. <laughs> What choice do you have? You don't have a child. And therefore you surrender totally to your eyes. Correct? You are surrendered. You are Atma, Ego, Manaha. Everything is just at the altar of your eyes. This is what we say surrender. The master is a guide who gives you the message or guidelines. You follow the guidelines and message, not follow the physical form of the master. When we use this word devotee, we are using this word, the one who is totally following the master, his physical expression or physical presence. This will not solve any problem. Devotion to the message is very important and devotion to the master. If you are devoted to the message, then there is a possible transformation which is which can happen in the presence in the presence of the master. Because the master who shares the understanding, not the technique, not the method, but something beyond technique, beyond method something beyond his physical expression, something which is his presence, that is very important. Ramana was there to de deliver the message of something which can wake you up. Osho was there to de deliver the message which can wake you up, not to put you to sleep. And we just take again his message to go back to the sleep, Dulava. Jai Krishna. The last lecture that he delivered in Madras, he was 85, he was sick, and he started looking around. He saw the same faces again and again, listening to him. And he asked these people, Don't you understand, sir? Can't you understand what I am saying? I am saying since 50 years, I see you every time sitting in front of me. Don't you understand anything what I am saying? Or am I doing a spiritual entertainment, sir? Am I doing a spiritual entertainment, sir? And started crying like a child. Seekers often have a curious idea about the enlightened state. Please describe your typical day and how you perceive the world. There's no others here. It's only I exist here. Nobody else. And if you want to be more uh, in the worldly term to be humble, I say God exists. I am God and you are God and everything is God here. If you don't like that, because this eye is very confusing for most of the people. They say it's whether small eye or big eye. <laughs> so we use the word God. God exists here. It's nothing else. It's single. There are no I mean, many here. It's only one. It's God. There's no difference at all. I don't find any difference here.
Jnana sees the world, not separate from himself. No separateness from his, from his realization and the, from the world. No separateness. Jnana sees the world also as himself. What do you see when you look into the eyes of your people? <laughs> I am seeing myself in those people. <laughs> then, uh, then grace will work. I feel like everybody. I don't feel I am something, something. Something got a realized soul or anything. Just like them, I play with them and I talk with them and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sometimes I'm very naughty. You're naughty? Yes, of yes. course. They they <laughs> like they like it very much. <laughs> Even in the car I I go on singing. Yes. When I am singing, I am immersed in the song. I forget myself. In Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna has asked, what you asked me now? Oh Lord, what is the description of a wise man? You know, Krishna completely ignored the question. You know why? Because if he says, a wise man speaks Sanskrit and speaks very slow. Tomorrow, five billion people will start speaking Sanskrit and very slow. Does he move? Yeah, very fast walking. Everybody will start doing fast work. It's like Gandhi, Khadar. So anybody putting on Khadar, can you make him a Gandhi? A wise man may sit down in a particular way, walk in a particular way. But a particular way of sitting down, walking, speaking, living doesn't make you wise. A wise man can choose a lifestyle, but there is no lifestyle of the wise. Be wise and choose your lifestyle. When you would meet someone with a passion for awakening, what would be your short advice? I have only one message, message, spiritualism, that will call peace, love will open automatically. Love is not in mind and intellect. Love in heart. That is universal point. God is one. Ultimately, goal is one. <laughs> I am being a spiritual man. My method is one. For every country. Do whatever you think you should do. And never expect any result. Do whatever you think you should do. As if you are the doer. Total free will. What is life? Daily, one situation after another situation. In any situation, what I do is I live my life as if I have free will. In any given situation, I live my life as if I have total free will. 
with the total understanding that I am not the doer. To keep that passion going until he sees himself. Okay. <laughs> he must. Because that is something, oh, it's a great blessing. A person is looking at himself, looking for himself. Oh, you. It's like a river has all taken a turn. You know, whatever way you can help him, it help him. Because the person is available. And that is the time he's vulnerable. It's like the uh, snake, when he's removing his uh, skin, very vulnerable time. You can kill them just like that. A person who is changing his lifestyle, looking for a direction, is very vulnerable. If you are ready, it will come to you in a minute. If you have such faith. You're saying that for uh, realization, there has to be tremendous desire, tremendous longing for yes, realization. Yes, of course, of course. There has to be a passion, yes, a fire. Yeah, I used to cry. I had to cry. Spirituality is not just about healing. Spirituality is not just about getting over some abuses in childhood. Spiritual life is a lot more than that. <laughs> Spiritual life is seeing myself as free in spite of the abuses, in spite of what happened to the body-mind. I am not the body-mind sense complex. Self is free, it was ever free. Self is untouched, it was ever untouched. That is spirituality. And if you approach a person who is really a Shrotriya Brahmanishta, he teaches this is the correct method. And there is no question, no, there need not be any doubt that he will definitely deliver the goods, bring you that sense of conviction after which you will never, you know, waver and you will never get any doubts also. That was the case, in my case, you know, when I saw this teacher, I got, I am convinced and I need not seek anybody else's advice also. In fact, a stage has come when I can give advice to others. So such a powerful personality, I come, came across, I was lucky. Have you heard of Robert Adams, a great master, American, a jnani, fully realized jnani, without any blemish, she was the beautiful jnani. I had the great opportunity of visiting him continuously for three years in America and I used to hold his one knee, sit, I like Mahatmas, not only their words, their presence, their every movement, even a finger movement, even the moustache, hair's movement, I love because everything is truth. Truth is what? Bliss. Truth is not a concept. And when there is that bliss in Robert Adams, for a fool like me seated next to him, I was also swimming in bliss. <coughs> there was another friend of Robert Adams, 20 years they were all close friends, John Wilkins. He just held another knee of Robert <laughs> and then said, Robert, today we have been so close friends and I have been listening to your talks. Today I want you to make me understand in my own level what is truth and what is non-truth. 
what is reality and what is non reality robert don't play the game of game of saying it is omnipresence it is omnipotence it is everywhere there there is no place where it is not there all that i don't want i have heard it enough <laughs> <laughs> but make me understand from my level fortunately being a nyani he was also a jolly man very happy man so he was smiling listening like that and when john Wil wilkins asked this conditional conditional prayer you must make me understand suddenly he assumed a very serious look because his disciple his devotees admirers knew his moods change because of the disease so one moment he was very happy next moment he assumed a very angry face who are you then john wilkins thought that robert is in a different mood he has he he is capable of forgetting also so he has forgotten him <laughs> this is all his problem not robert's problem this is all his thinking so he said i am john wilkins he just looked pleadingly he was looking at him i am john wilkins and robert again looked at him i am john wilkins then robert gave one of the most beautiful smiles i have ever come come across in my life he said john in that i am is the truth john wilkins is the untruth i am is the reality john wilkins is the unreality there were 70 80 people in the hall everyone went into samadhi absolute silence Each interview was a beautiful meeting in presence. The combined wisdom of these teachers was mind-blowing and has energized and nourished me in my work as a spiritual teacher. We have been welcomed back on regular visits to many of the master's ashrams. and several have become good friends <laughs> some of them we are lucky to meet regularly at our natural mountain since the interviews four of the masters have passed away so the film was a timely call to action and several others are in their 90s It was a wonderful experience to meet them and capture their blueprint of truth to share with others. My profound gratitude to all the many people who helped me realize the original vision.
because we're Western people, we don't have much time, and so we would like to awaken very quickly. Mm. And in your introduction, you're suggesting um, a long, long years of study. And unfortunately, in the West, nobody has time for that anymore. Do you have some um, recommendations for the McDonald's approach? Cookie. <laughs> 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 